Hello there, everyone who's joining us out there in the magical world of the internet. Uh, my name is Tyron Park, and I'm thrilled that you've jumped on in however way you have to come and join us today. Um, as you may know, I'm the Artistic Director of the Australian Musical Theatre Festival, and part of what I'm doing at the moment is just finding opportunities to introduce the incredible group of people that are coming to work with us in this year's festival and allowing people to find out a little bit about them and what the classes will look like. Um, before I do introduce Robin McCleavy, my lovely friend Robin McCleavy, uh, I just wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I am on at the moment, the Boomerang and Wurundjeri people of the Eastern Kulin Nation. And also to acknowledge that the festival takes place in Lutrinita and to acknowledge the uh, elders past, present and emerging. And to remind myself, um, as I always do at this moment, just that, that for many thousands of years, people have sung their songs and danced their dances and told their stories on these lands. And uh, we're very grateful to continue to do that um, every day and particularly through the festival. And, um, I, I'm so excited that Robin McCleavy is here with us today and also at the festival. Um, I've known Robin for a, a long time um, and I was so delighted to run into Robin in Launceston um, a, a few months ago and find out that she was again dwelling in Tasmania. <laughs> and go, you must come and join us at the festival. So Robin, <laughs> welcome, welcome back. Thank to you. Home. Welcome to this strange portal world where we're zooming yeah. across and welcome to the festival. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of it. We're thrilled, we're very excited and for those of you um, who, uh, you know, a quick Google will show you all the amazing things that Robin has done all over the world in, in acting and the incredible production she's been involved with, the incredible people she's worked with. Robin, I wanted to ask you, the thing that I'm always interested in is, is sort of where did theatre come from for you? Where, where, why did the theatre come about? How did that occur? Um, well, I think, you know, my mum was a very natural storyteller and very, um, she was always very animated. And so I just naturally observed her and became that way myself. And I think genetically as well. Um, through my Irish ancestry, the, you know, great storytellers. So, and I was quite the comedian when I was a child. And so <laughs> I became a lot more serious as I got older. But um, I love doing impersonations and mimicking people and dressing up as, you know, like my school principal and impersonating them. So I was quite the clown. Um, and then that, I don't know, I went to Mama's Theatre Group in Hobart because um, I grew up in Hobart and it just kind of snowballed from there because I felt so alive and free mm. and those were feelings that I really cherished as a child and then yeah it just continued from there. I had a similar thing because I grew up in Newcastle and there was just a sense of um, just community before I knew what community meant yeah. just you know and play play and and find I've kind of found who my people were through the theater which was yeah it was really lovely so um you've you you were born in Melbourne but you've lived a lot of your life in Tasmania How yeah so I moved to Tassie when I was seven um and grew up in Hobart um went to Ogilvy High School and then I went to Rosney College which had a um performing arts program there so that was great and then, yeah, I went to, well, I studied at the VCA um, when Lindy Davies was there and then eventually went to NIDA and yeah, it's, and now I'm back in Launceston. So I was living in Canada and Los Angeles for 10 years um, and did a TV show in Canada for five of those years. And yeah, and then finally, two years ago, moved back to Launceston and it's actually been amazing. Yeah. Well, it feels well so home, right. home is, you know, home is home somehow, you know, no matter all the amazing things you've done and we'll talk about that. But I mean, I feel a bit the same with Newcastle is you go home and you go, oh, this is, this is home. And you also come back as an adult and it feels, it feels a little different. Can yeah. you tell me then, because there's a part of the festival that I um, always refer to as the Richard and Pam Festival. 
So Richard and Pam are my parents, okay? Yeah. So they love musical theatre, but they're not very interested in um, being in classes. They're no great singers, no offence, Richard and Pam. They're no <laughs> uh, but they love watching music theatre. They love being involved in the community of music theatre. Um, and they love travelling. So you live in Launceston now. So what are the great things about Launceston? Where should I, where should I be taking them? Where should I be saying oh. them? Because they're going to be school groups as well who are coming down. Okay. When I first came to Launceston, I came for the festival and I taught um, before I was on board in a kind of leadership position. And um, I didn't even know the gorge was up the road. Like I didn't yeah. know. So what are the what are what are the things you love about Launceston? Um, well, I there's lots of things. I actually love the community here. They're very down to earth and connected and authentic. And that's something that I've really craved for a long time. So I've found that. Um, in terms of, you know, sightseeing, I guess, yeah, the gorge is incredible. There's lots of wonderful walks up behind the gorge as well. Um, I love food. So I would do a restaurant and cafe kind of situation if you're coming here, like go and eat at a few of the nice restaurants. And there's a beautiful bakery, bread and butter bakery. It's one of my favourites. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love there. There are there are a bunch of places that have now become my favourite haunts. Yeah. Um, well, come one of the things I want to do is is sort of move musical theatre, you know, outside just just the kind of classroom and the theatres, and so there are things happening in the gorge and in restaurants and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It's great, kind of. And they did, great. yeah, they did King Ubu in the gorge a couple of years ago with Chris oh. McQuaid, and I missed it, but um, apparently it was spectacular and there was a light show and okay. yeah, so outdoor events really suit Launceston, yeah. But bring a jumper, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about, before we start to talk about classes and about teaching, and just a, sort of about, so, so you went to VCA, then you kept going north, you went to NIDA, which is maybe where I first met you, I'm somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Um, and then you, I mean, you, you hit the big time pretty quickly when you graduated. Like you were in big shows. And I guess what I mean by big shows is, I mean, every show is a big show if it's got Kate Blanchard in it and people like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But the kind of breadth of the show, like they were the classics. They were the kinds of plays that um, that are just kind of the staple. We, I, don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if we do them as much anymore. Or certainly I haven't mm -hmm. seen them recently, but. Yeah, the and, Arthur Millers and the, I mean, I didn't do an Arthur Miller, but Tennessee Williams and um, Edward Olby, yeah, who's afraid of Virginia like, Woolf. They're just like those big, meaty, like languagey, like big feelings, big dramatic scenes. It's just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> and actors like you know, greatest dream. I, I learned really early on. And I think as, you know, I was in my 20s when I did those and it was just so exhilarating. And that caliber, as you say, of like, you know, working with Kate Blanchett and Liv Ullman um, as, as our director and Joel Edgerton. And then I was working with Benedict Andrews, um, who's since gone into film as well. Just that really heightened kind of almost operatic Ooh. sensibility um and it translates to musical theater as well I guess it's just that expansiveness that you can experience as a performer um yeah it just takes you on this wild journey and yeah and did um, you did you seek okay. those those kind of that kind of material out or did you, it just sort of come to you I think with something really magical happens as an actor I can't describe it other than you get the roles that you're supposed to Ooh. play. And they just, it's like you've got something in your, and, you know, I talk about energy a lot when I teach because I'm interested in the metaphysical realm. And so if you've got something in your energy field that speaks to that character and to that play or to that period, it, it's like you just magnetise it to you. Ooh. I, I that rings completely true for me. I've, I've even had times where there was one time where I didn't get a role. I was told I didn't get the role. And I was like, I mean, it sounds incredibly arrogant, but I was like, <laughs> I think they've got that role. Like, I think, <laughs> are you, I was saying to my agent, I, like, are you sure? Like, mm -hmm. I was in the ensemble and I said, but I, I just think I was supposed to play that role. And it mm -hmm. was literally, I said, do you mind going back and checking? And, and, and she then went, 
oh yeah, you, you do, you've got the role. And I was like, I sort of knew, I kind of oh. knew that I was supposed to play that role. And there are other times where I've tried to muscle myself into how I think it should look. Yeah. You know, I, I want yeah. to do this, but it's not quite energetically right. And yeah. I kind of know that at the time as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and this is amazing thing that happens where you just kind of slip in and even though it's, you know, challenging and it, you have to climb the mountain to discover who this person is and who the, what the relationships are, there's still a naturalness to it where you're just like, well, yeah, this is an extension of me and I'm just decorating it and doing my research and coming into this like imaginative space where I can express this part of me that's just been sitting here patiently going, oh. I wonder when <laughs> I wonder when I can come out and you know oh. tell the world this part of me. Um, so yeah, I so understand that. And just seeing you talk about it and seeing you light up around that um, <laughs> is that thing, isn't it? I mean, it's it's a version of play. It's a version of playing which we yeah. do as children, and we and we go, and then we kind of you know that you know. I mean, I obviously I teach a lot and at the VCA and you know, very intensely teach process and yeah. all these techniques. And then sometimes I just go, lighten up, it's pretensies. <laughs> it's, it's pretensies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. In the best yeah. way. In the best way. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, when you went to, so, uh, you know, like you, you, you talked about a few of those amazing plays that you did, and I don't want to embarrass you, but that, you know, they were really extraordinary productions of those plays as well. Like, and uh, I remember very clearly Virginia Woolf. I remember it was, you know, had one of those sort of perspex boxes that re sort of revolved. And it was Catherine McClements who, who mm -hmm. came up, it wasn't. She smashed a glass and it came right and smashed in front of me. And I remember, I remember the kind of visceral experience being in the theatre and going, oh my God, it was so exciting. And I'd seen that production, I'd seen sorry, I'd seen the play many times. I'd seen it with Diana Rigg and David Suchet, mm -hmm. like great people, but I loved the way it was being reinvented. I loved that. And it feels like so many of the shows that you were doing were classics that were being reinvented. Um, and, and that happens a lot in music theatre uh, right. and needs to be happening more and more in music theatre. Mm -hmm. the, the one that you did that, you know, Streetcar, and of course you won Helen Hayes Award for for the role that you played in Streetcar and you went to America and you played opposite Kate and Joel Edgerton. Did you want to stay? Were you ever thinking I'm going to stay in America and make my, make my life here and do all of that? that? No, it came a lot later. I think I was so immersed in the creative experience. And of course it was incredible. Like we, because of Kate's friends who would come and see the play, we met, you know, Meryl Streep and, Martin Scorsese and you name it, everybody came backstage and, you know, told us how wonderful we were. We were. So, and I was like 29 at the time and just like, this is actually happening. Wow. Um, but yeah, I didn't envision my life there. I was just so enjoying the creative process. And it was, um, there's something about Tennessee Williams that transports you into that time, even if the production is being reinvented and you know, our set was very non-traditional, was very kind of flat. We didn't have the deep spiral staircase. We had like a fire escape kind of staircase and it was, but being in that time period, it was just a deeply emotional experience. And I think that's what I've always craved is the experience and not the fame or the visibility, although that comes with beautiful gifts as well, but just having the immersive experience. Mm. Um, yeah. That makes great sense. We won't probably have Meryl and Martin back <laughs> at the, at the uh, festival, but we do have Paulini and Philip Cost and some other good people. And Amazing. I'll be there. I'm like, sorry, Meryl's not here today, but um, I'll, I'll have to do. Well, exactly. And you know what? You're exceptional. Um, and for creating this festival and for, or for being, you know, putting it on in Launceston, where, you know, if I can say it, I think Australia we're kind of culturally malnourished in a lot of ways. I mean, we have so much to offer and yet it's not until these festivals or, you know, big events that we can finally go, okay, great. Where, where is it? I want to eat it up. Um, you know, and you kind of, we need to make the most of it and keep 
um, building these events so our communities can be fed. Look, it's part of the reason why I love festivals. I love them because yeah. you go along and you take a chance on one thing and then you meet people. Like you literally just meet all these people. And I don't know where you where we find, can find these kind of, and, and it is about community for me. I was talking to you just before and saying, the great thing about last year was about people finding their own voice, whatever that mm -hmm. means to people, sometimes literally. Um, yeah. But, you know, also, I mean, you're not necessarily in musical theatre, but the way you talk about an actor's craft, that's exactly, that, that's, that's the basis for musical theatre. It's telling mm -hmm. stories and sometimes um, heightening them because that's what we do in song. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. without the story, without understanding that, without understanding that, that kind of emotional breadth that you're talking about, it can be pretty empty. So it's part of the gift of having you um, be with us. I imagine you've had great teachers. You talked about you know, the places that you've studied. Um, is there anything in particular that you would like to impart, I guess, to young actors? Is there is that something you think about, or is that we've only got yeah. we've only got short moments with you in the festival teaching these courses? But what is what do you hope people might take away? Um, I would love to create a a learning space that is intimate and warm and fun and feels magical. Mm. I'm all about magic these days. And I think that we are, we underestimate how, um, you know, what our capacity is for weaving and creating magic. And just having, you know, a group of people in a room, how much energy and excitement and wonderment you can create in an afternoon is incredible. So that's my my wish. <laughs> your class. I want to do your class. <laughs> um, I, um, I have to say it's so interesting because, um, you know, having known you, and, and when I say known you, Robin and I were ushers together at the State Theatre in Sydney. It's a very classy job. Beautiful theatre. It it's a beautiful theatre and a lot of great people worked there. I mean, there's nothing yeah. like ushering there. It was awesome. Um, but you've always been a bit magical, I have to say. I know that you were going, but seriously, you've always, that's always been, and it's interesting hearing you talk because I'm starting in 2X time, you know, one of these, you know, big shows, big musicals that goes around Australia, just to be reminded of that because you you get in the tunnel. Yeah, wow. What's the show? Tell us. Uh, Sondheim on Sondheim. You know, oh, beautiful. It's a, it's a tribute to Stephen Sondheim yeah. where he narrates, wow. he narrates it and everyone under the sun, there's Rhonda Birchmore and Josh Pitterman and everybody wow. you can imagine, they're amazing. But, you know, with all of the work around that, just to remember about the magic and the play mm -hmm. is so important. And that's just so present in you. And I'm so pleased that you just happen to be home in Launceston and available to us to come and do some classes because you are just, you know, in, this is this I, this is a perfect little, I want to bottle this and go, that's <laughs> who you are. And that's how you're walking away from working with you. And so we are so grateful that you're coming to teach for us oh. I can't wait to see you in May and thank you so much for your time today thank you Taryn I'm so I feel so lucky to be invited into the musical theatre fold I'm looking forward to it yeah we might keep you just keep yeah you. why not absolutely <laughs> sorry Kate sorry Meryl sorry Martin We're here. time's up <laughs> <laughs> Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive